Hi, my name is Sheila Banks, and today we're going to take a deep dive into providing supports for all learners in a virtual learning environment. Throughout this session, I'm going to provide you with examples and artifacts of how this can look and sound in a virtual classroom. By the end of this session, I want you to be able to use instructional supports to ensure opportunities for mastery in a virtual learning environment. We're also going to make connections to what best expectations are in a face-to-face -face setting and how this impacts our practice. I want you to focus on this guiding question in our session. How can I ensure that all students have the opportunity to master what is being taught in a virtual environment? We know the importance of mastery in a face-to-face -face environment, and we wanna ensure that we continue to support students to reach that level of mastery, even through a computer or through videotaped assignments. Before we dive further into the materials, I wanna address why this is such an important topic. As educators, we can agree that differentiated instruction is important. Differentiated instruction is not just for students with official documents such as IEPs or IAPs. We know that supporting learners at their level and based on their needs supports everyone in the learning environment. Differentiated instruction also anchors the thinking process. In this process, we're building thinkers who are stronger and more independent. Lastly, differentiated instruction provides equity in learning. And by equity, I mean that we are making every attempt possible to level the playing field. We're providing supports to students based on need, even though all students may not receive the exact same supports. Let's take a look at the quote on the screen here. Differentiation is a philosophy of teaching rooted in deep respect for students, acknowledgement of their differences, and the drive to help all students thrive. Such ideas imply that teachers proactively modify curricula, teaching methods, resources, learning activities, or requirements for student products to better meet students' learning needs. I want to really emphasize the concept of deeply respecting students. By adjusting assignments, by not lowering expectations, and by being discreet, we are helping students to achieve mastery no matter where they're learning. Let's make a connection to our virtual learning environment. So these environments do present educators with the challenge of not being able to see students struggle in the moment. In our face-to-face -face classrooms, we not only anticipate challenges, but we have the advantage of being able to see students in the working process. And we tend to go over to them and make those adjustments. We reteach, we provide supports when necessary because we see them struggling. We don't have that advantage in the virtual learning environment. So we have to be proactive with our actions and make sure that we are anticipating providing students this level of support they need, and we're not being defensive after the lesson has been completed. Those in the moment adjustments are more feasible face to face. We can help students through the virtual setting. It's just more structured and a more planned process. Let's make a connection to our NIET teaching standards rubric. In this session, we are addressing the indicator teacher knowledge of students. Specifically, we are addressing this descriptor. The teacher sometimes provides differentiated instructional methods and content to ensure children have the opportunity to master what is being taught. We know the importance of mastering content in our face-to-face -face environment, and we wanna ensure that in our virtual environments, we are proactive in providing students with the individual supports that they need to access the content and complete assignments. So in a virtual setting, there are things that students need to know. For one, students need to know what to do. They need to know how to gain knowledge from their teacher, through video, or from the resources that are being provided to them. They need to know how to complete assignments with accuracy and in a timely manner. And they need to know how what they're learning connects to other subjects or to their real world. 
Now, in addition to what they need to do, to, students also need to know what to use. If there are graphic organizers embedded in a lesson, students need to know how to use those accurately in a virtual environment. They need to know how to access their adjusted reading level assignments that are appropriate for them. Many computer programs have screen reading tools and students benefit from these, so we have to show them how to use them. And lastly, students need to know how to use the appropriate tools in a virtual setting to reach success. It's not just about providing the tool, we also have to show students how they are used. So what does this practice look like in action? We're gonna focus our discussion on three major ideas. Idea one is how we can vary format of assignments to address different levels and different needs of students. Idea two, we will address how to provide instructional scaffolding when needed. And idea three addresses how can we enhance visuals so that all students have access to their content. So let's dive into our examples based on these ideas. So we're in idea one and that addresses varying format. So what you see here is an example of a lesson provided to students through a learning management system. And this is how many students are experiencing their virtual learning. So this first lesson has students building understanding of the first part of a text. These students are reading The Giver, which for this curriculum was a grade seven level text. So I wanted to make sure that students from different levels of learning had access to this text so that they could build comprehension. So what's provided to them, one, is a video of the text being read aloud side by side with the actual text itself. This way students can hear what's being said and also read the words on the side and connect those two together. So this will give many students greater access to the text and get them to start comprehending what that text means rather than just providing a single method of reading the text. Now what's also provided to the learners is the actual PDF of the text itself. Many learners benefit from just reading the words and being able to think through them and make their own conclusions. Now we're jumping into idea two, which is providing instructional scaffolding. So this assignment appears after students have began ready, reading the text. This assignment deals with emotions that the character is feeling in chapter one. So all students would actually receive the same directions for this assignment and keep in mind that the expectations for the assignment will not be lowered. What will change is how students reach those expectations, but the expectations of mastery themselves will be the same for all students. So I want you to notice for this assignment, I've assigned this assignment to nine students. These nine students do not need additional scaffolds. They can receive the unedited assignment as it appears in the, in the curriculum. What they also receive though, is a teacher explainer video that gives the students greater access to what the expectations of the assignment are. So in the video, the teacher actually reads the assignment and gives more information and examples about the expectations. Before we move on, I wanna give you an example and preview a teacher explainer video. So I'm gonna pause and let you see the example. For this next assignment, we're gonna look at a part of chapter one and we're gonna talk about it. First, I'll read the part of chapter one that we are gonna look at and remember, this part comes directly from chapter one. Are you ready? Let's listen. He had waited a long time for this special December. Now that it was almost upon him, he wasn't frightened, but he was eager, he decided. So for the remainder of the video, the teacher will continue reading from the text directly, which is required for this assignment. But by the end of the video, 
she will share with the students what questions will be asked in their classroom assignment and ways to attack those questions and gain evidence from the text. So the teacher is explaining the assignment. And this is very important when students are working away from their teacher. They need the teacher's explanation and rationale behind how we complete assignments. So on the screen here, this is an example of what the unedited assignment looks like. As you can see, the questions appear exactly as they were written in the curriculum. Now, this would be assigned to general education students without accommodations or learning needs beyond the curriculum. So this would go to that segment of students. As we move on, we're gonna address how to increase the scaffolding for students with particular needs. So as you can see, the instructions for the assignment are the same. And I just wanna reiterate that the expectations for mastery have remained the same. We're gonna change the way that students go about addressing their learning. So all students here, again, receive the teacher explainer video that was previously explained. But what 11 students in this class will receive is an assignment that has scaffolds embedded within it. So let's look at an example. So as we can see on the screen, students are addressing the same questions as the unedited assignment, but what has been added are sentence stems. And this will help students who have language needs or need a means to express understanding based on a text. By the end of this assignment though, the responses from the students will actually be the same. This assignment just has the additional wording to help students with their thinking and expression skills. In addition to the sentence stems, this assignment also has embedded dictionary links because part of the assignment requires students to identify the meaning of particular words. So rather than having students guess what the words mean, we wanna make sure that they are accurate and build understanding of what the words really mean and then make connections to how they're used in the text. So who would receive this type of assignment? This assignment would be assigned to students who need support in structuring their ideas and being accurate with definitions. Let's jump into idea three, which addresses how we can enhance visuals for various types of learners. So again, we see the same emotions assignment, but this time, this one is going out to four students. And these four students have a particular learning need. Now, they also receive the teacher explainer video to help them build an understanding of the teacher's expectations, but their assignment format has been changed. Again, students are receiving the same questions and the same expectations as their other classmates, but what has changed here is the color contrast of the assignment. Notice that the dark background and the light wording and the enlarged text makes this easier for some students to read. Who would receive this type of assignment? Well, this would be assigned to students with visual impairments or students who need an additional stimulus in their work to be able to launch that comprehension process. Why do you think these three elements are critical in a virtual setting? Being able to vary format, provide instructional scaffolding, or enhance visuals. Let me also ask you, what would the learning environment look like if this was missing? Before we end our session, I want you to reflect on your practice and make connections. How might you adjust your current virtual learning practices to include instructional practices that support various levels of learners? How might this impact the success of your students? I want to thank you for your engagement in today's session. For more information on supporting students with disabilities in a virtual setting, please visit our NIET newsroom and blog for more information.